Welcome to Techie Chat. One of the questions I get asked from a lot of new FreeBSD users, and indeed this video is really aimed at new FreeBSD users, and that is how do I keep my system up to date and secure? How do I keep both the operating system and the applications up to date within a FreeBSD environment? Okay, so let's get cracking. So here I am on my FreeBSD desktop, and if I just type NeoFetch, for those of you who watch my videos often, you know that this will be the same, um, or you might recognize this desktop as the same one that I set up from scratch before. And when I left you last time, it was a Cinnamon desktop, and it still is the Cinnamon desktop running on here. So yeah, FreeBSD 14 is what I'm currently running. I have 940 packages currently installed. Cinnamon 5.4.9 is installed. And I'm using the Sakura terminal emulator here. All right, so now that we've had a quick look at what I'm running, let me just clear that and let's get into it. One of the differences between FreeBSD and Linux when it comes to packages and application and system updates is Linux will often come with a graphical utility or a command line utility like apt, for example, uh, to keep the system up to date. And the graphical utilities are fairly prevalent in the Linux world, and it makes it very easy and simple to keep the system up to date. However, what's going on in the background can sometimes be quite complicated because in the world of Linux, the way applications are installed uh, and the way applications are made to run on Linux means that configuration files aren't just kept in a standard place. They can actually be in lots of different places within the, the Linux system. Now, there is a more complicated way of putting that uh, or saying that. However, I, I thought I'd try and make it as simple as possible. Uh, essentially, the way Linux runs applications is configuration files from and repositories or the place where you get the updates from can come from lots of different places and the configuration files can be hosted or installed on your system in lots of different places. Now that's very different to the way FreeBSD works and it's one of the reasons why actually people choose FreeBSD as opposed to Linux. It's one of the reasons why people prefer uh, the FreeBSD way of doing things. And that is because FreeBSD has a very strict and clear way of keeping the system or the operating system and applications separate. So, for example, when you upgrade the operating system, the applications themselves aren't affected because the configuration files for the applications are always in the same place on a FreeBSD installation. Now, Try that on, say, for example, a standard Linux uh, distribution. Uh, try upgrading the operating system, and you may well find that applications break. However, that shouldn't be the case with a FreeBSD install. So, for example, there's a very clear distinction between, say, for example, forward slash etc, which has the operating system configuration files located in there on FreeBSD and the application files or configuration files which are held in forward slash user forward slash local forward slash etc. In fact, let's just take a look at those locations now. So I'm just going to type here forward slash uh, cd space forward slash etc and we'll just run this and here we go. These are actually operating system specific configuration files and they're always here that that wouldn't change now if we wanted to go into user specific files we can type cd space forward slash usr forward slash local 
forward slash etc. Again, type list or ls to list the files in that particular directory. And these now are specific application files. For example, Pipewire, Pulse is in there. Auto mount configuration is in there. Avahi is in there. These are specific application configuration files for the user. And therefore, if I upgrade the operating system, then only the operating system files are affected. And if I upgrade the applications using the package tool, then only the packages or the applications are updated. It's a very neat and clean way of running things. And generally it means that the system itself is very understandable in terms of upgrades and the way things work. So how do we actually run updates? So the first thing we're going to take a look at, let me just clear that. Uh, let me just make sure that I'm logged in as root. So the first thing we are going to run is free BSD minus update. And we are going to now check the freebsd.org mirrors to see if there is updates available for the operating system. Now I'm running the very latest version of FreeBSD 14. So I'm not expecting there to be updates available for this operating system because it's already been updated, uh, only updated a few weeks ago. And because I'm not running the very latest uh, software, although I could have chosen to do that when I installed FreeBSD, and indeed I can still change it to be the latest software, I'm only run running something called quarterly updates. So as I suspected, no updates are needed to update the system. I'm already running the latest operating system, and that's to be expected you wouldn't necessarily expect lots and lots of updates to an operating system, um, particularly after it's been out for a while. However, if there were updates, I would type freebsd-update and I would type install. And that would then go off and install any available updates from the freebsd.org mirrors. Very simple very easy to understand. So there weren't any updates to install for the operating system. So let's just clear that. So the second thing that we need to run is packages, package update. And so we are just going to type PKG update. Now we know, or if you don't already know, I'll just run through it anyway, how to use the package tool because I've covered that off in other videos. But let's just go through it as this is a beginner uh, introduction to FreeBSD. Um, let's just go through the package tool. So if you wanted to find an application, let's say, for example, um, <laughs> now I can't think of one. Um, I don't know, note, for example, package search note. It's now going to go off and find anything to do with note or anything with note in the title or the description. And as you can see, there are tons of things, tons of applications. There are nearly 60,000 applications available in the free BSD repositories. Um, so it's bound to find something with note in the title. And as you can see, there are quite a lot. Now, if I wanted to, for example, uh, install one of those applications, I can see here there are notes dash two. So I'm just going to try and do that. So package search notes dash two. Let me just make sure that that comes up. Oh, there are a few. So notes dash two dot one. And I'm just going to, instead of searching for it, I'm going to ask it to install. Ah. I need to type the whole thing. So notes dash two dot one dot zero. All right, and off it goes. 
So that has now queried the FreeBSD repository catalog. And because we searched for it, we saw it was available. New packages to be installed, notes.2.1.0. And I'm going to say yes to that because it's just notes. It's going to be pretty small, I imagine. All right, that has gone and done that. So that's been installed. And if I do a search for notes, there it is, notes all installed great very very simple very very easy let me just clear that so that's how we go about searching for applications and installing applications using the pkg tool and in a similar way we use the pkg tool to update and upgrade the applications that we already have installed so I'm going to type here PKG update. Remember, I'm logged in as root here. And it's going to tell me that all the repositories, the FreeBSD repository is up to date. Um, and that too is to be expected, given the frequency of updates that I have it set to. Now, if there were applications to be updated, then those would be listed in there. Um, if I type PKG upgrade, then it will go off and it will upgrade those applications. The system will go off and upgrade those applications. You might have noticed that on the operating system, it talks about freebsd.org mirrors for the operating system and for applications, it talks about FreeBSD repositories. Just to recognize that the repositories are for applications and the mirrors are for the operating system. Great, so that is all been updated. This particular system has now been fully updated. There are no updates needed from a security perspective or from an application perspective on this system it's fully up to date however if you're not comfortable running terminal there is a, another application a graphical utility for managing your software and that is octo pkg now i don't run this myself because i'm now given that i've set up freebsd uh, from from scratch now i'm very comfortable with the terminal but I do recognize that some users might find a graphical utility a bit more comfortable to use, particularly if you're new to FreePSD. And Octo PKG uh, actually does that job very well. I would also recommend if you are a new FreePSD user um, or you are looking to try FreePSD for the first time, I also recommend, uh, firstly, taking a look at the FreeBSD documentation. Uh, this is the FreeBSD documentation here, and it is very, very thorough. There is a lot of information in here. And really, I could just direct you to the documentation and say, read that and you'll be completely um, au fait with running FreeBSD. But these videos are really designed to help people get on with uh, actually using their FreeBSD, getting comfortable with, with FreeBSD environment. Um, and I would encourage you, if you haven't already, uh, to read the documentation when you feel comfortable doing so, because there is an awful lot of information in here. Also, if you're not sure and you'd like to run FreeBSD, um, there is also a operating system called GhostBSD, uh, they will shortly be upgrading their base version to FreeBSD 14. Um, if you click on download here, currently they're running uh, on FreeBSD 13.1, but they are, as of today, working on releasing a new version of GhostBSD that's based on FreeBSD 14, the very latest version of FreeBSD. And GhostBSD is a really, really good introduction to the world of FreeBSD and they have some bespoke applications like their software station tool that makes managing the system really simple and easy. So 
if you are unsure about downloading FreeBSD and trying to set it up for yourself, um, then I would encourage you to give GhostBSD a go. Right, well, that's about it from me. If you have enjoyed this video, this uh, introduction to FreeBSD, then I hope you've been yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to click on like and subscribe. And if you would like to support the channel, then please click on the Ko-fi link, which you can find in the channel description uh, to uh, donate towards the channel. All right. Thanks for watching.